For this lesson, we'll be focusing on electromagnetic waves. But first, let's go over a little bit of background and fundamentals just as a refresher. Now, referring back to the fundamentals of electronics, energy flows within a circuit and returns to the source or other components as the circuit functions. These two types of energy are known as electrical waves or fields or magnetic fields or waves. Now, any energy waves not absorbed within the circuit are released or radiated. This radiator energy is typically undesirable, which is referred to as noise. In those circuits that consist of both electrical fields and magnetic fields combined, they create what is known as electromagnetic fields. Now, electromagnetic fields, when referred to the communication world, the idea is not to suppress the radiated signal. Instead, the idea is to release the energy by the use of an antenna. Now, anytime you have signals leaving an antenna, you have what is called wave propagation. Wave propagation is the movement of radio signals through the atmosphere from a transmitter to receiver. Now, once the electromagnetic wave exits the antenna, it travels by one of three avenues. Ground wave, which means it travels along the ground. Line of sight, it travels in a straight line from point to point. Or you have a sky wave, which means it travels to the ionosphere and back. When performing your calculations for wave propagation, it's very common to come across your intrinsic impedance. Intrinsic impedance is the impedance or resistance of the medium in which your electromagnetic waves flow through. Now, when determining this impedance, it's very common to use your electric and magnetic waves to find this resistance. Now, the way it becomes resistance is anytime you do electric waves or electric fields over magnetic fields, it's going to be volts over meter divided by amps over meter. And of course, the meters are going to cancel each other out and give you a simple Ohm's law of volts over amps equals ohms. So that's pretty simple. Also, it's very common to use permittivity and permeability since they refer to the material properties of a substance. However, you're just going to have to use the square root when applying these formulas. Now, a very common variable you'll see is 377 ohms for free space. And you're going to use that in some of your practice problems. Also, intrinsic impedance may also be known as characteristic impedance in some of your reference material. Just like any calculation performed in the electrical world, we always want to know power. Now for antennas, it's very common to come across power density. Power density is the power per unit of an area, which is measured over an area normal to the direction of the propagation wave. So right now I have an illustration below of an antenna radiating power over a given area. Now this area is usually over a radial area, usually circular. Now anytime you have this power dissipating outward, it usually gets weaker the further it goes out. The closer you are to the focal point, the stronger the power density. Now keep in mind, some of your books may also refer to as power density as radiated power density. So just be aware of that. Also, in all my other videos, I have permeability as A over M or amps over meters. But for this lesson, I changed it to I over M, which is still amps over meters. But I've changed it to A to an I so you're not to get confused with A for area. So just keep that in mind when I do the practice problems. All right, let's jump into our first problem. A lossless dielectric median has a magnetic field of 50 milliamps per meter and a electric field of 10 volts per meter. Determine the impedance and power density of the median. All right, well, just like any other problem, we're gonna start with what we know and don't know. Well, for what we know, we know our magnetic field is 50 milliamps per meter. We know our electric field, which is E, is 10 volts per meter. And what we want to find is our impedance, which is that guy right there. And we want to find our power density. Now, power density, there's no way I'm going to be able to make that symbol. So mine's going to look like a P with a tail. What I'm our impedance is pretty simple. Since we have our electric field and magnetic field, we can use that equation right there. So which means our impedance is going to equal our electric field over our magnetic field. And that's going to be 10 volts per meter over 50 milliamps per meter. And of course, when we plug and chug that in our calculator, the meters are going to cancel each other out and we're coming up with an answer of 200 ohms because it's going to be volt over current, which is amps. So volt over amps gives us resistance. And that's going to be 200 ohms.
So that our impedance is 200 ohms. Okay, so far so good. All right, now we can find our power density. Well, there's a few ways we do this. Look to our right, we can do this one right here, since now we have our impedance and we have our electric field. Or we can use our electric field and our magnetic field. Let's do both, just to check our answer. So our power density, I'm going to put a tail on it, equals electric field square over, and it's going to be our impedance, which is 200 ohms. So 10 times 10 is going to be 100 over 200 ohms is going to give us an answer of half, or in this case, 0 0.5 watts per meter square. All right, let's check it using this guy right here. So again, power density equals our electric field, which is 10 volts per meter times our magnetic field, which is 50 milliamps per meter. And if you plug and chug that in our calculator, it's also going to be, give you an answer of 0.5 watts per meter square. So both of those do match up. It's going to give us a final answer of 0 0.5 watts per meter square. All right, that was an easy problem. Let's do another one. All right, for our second example, a radio signal is transmitted via an antenna at 50 milliwatts within free space. The electric field measures approximately 43.4 millivolts per meter. Determine the effective area of the antenna. Same thing we always do. Let's write down what we know. First, we know the power is going to be transmitted at 50 milliwatts. So P equals 50 milliwatts. We know our electric field is 43.4 millivolts per meter. So that means our electric field is 43.4 millivolts per meter. And we also know our actual impedance because it said within free space. And if you look at your PE references, it's going to be 377 ohms. So our impedance for this guy is going to be 377 ohms. And we want to determine our effective area, which is A. Well, looking at this, we can work on it little by little. The first thing I would recommend is try to find our power density. Because from power density, with power, you can find your area. So let's find power density first. So if power density, put a tail on it, equals our electric field squared divided by our impedance. And that's going to be 43.4 millivolts per meter square. So 40. 3.4 millivolts per meter, and I want to square this, divided by, and this is free space, so it's going to be 377 ohms. Okay, and if I plug and chug that in our calculator, it's going to give us a power density of, it's going to be approximately 5 microwatts per meter square. Okay, well now, now that I got my power density, I can find my area using this equation right here. So which means our power density equals power over area. Well, using a little bit of algebra, and you could switch these two around right here to give you area equals power over power density. So which means our area is going to equal power, which is 50 milliwatts, over power density, which we just determined is 5 microwatts per meter square. Well, if you look at the algebra, this meter square is going to come up here, and then our power is going to be canceled out. And you're going to be left with a meter square answer, so that's a good sign. So 50 divided by 5 micro is going to give us an answer of 10,000 meters square. So you have an effective area of approximately 10 kilometers square. That's pretty good. So that is our final answer. All right, let's do another problem. All right, for our last problem, I just threw a small curveball at you. For this one, we need to determine the power density 
of a 150 watt transmission to a weather satellite 1,000 miles from the Earth's surface. Stating as usual, we know we have our power, which equals 150 watts, and we have our distance, or radius in this case, is going to be 1,000 miles. And we wanted to determine our power density. So, look out the tail. Well, here's where the curveball comes in. I give it to you in miles, because some of your equations may not give it to you in meters. It may give it to you in miles, it may give it to you in feet. So you got to be flexible when using these. Luckily, your calculator has a function where you can convert it from miles to kilometers. So on your calculator, you have conversion 7, which will convert miles to kilometers. So if you actually plug 1,000 miles in your calculator to kilometers, it's going to give you an answer of 1,609 point three four four kilometers. So in our case it's gonna be one million six hundred and nine thousand three hundred and forty four meters. Well if that knocked out we should be able to determine our power density with just what we have here. Well I have a distance for this one. I don't have an area, I have a distance. Well anytime you have a distance it's very likely you're doing a radius or you're doing an actual from one point to another, which is this guy right there. So, what we can do is we can take power density equals power over, and this is the area of a sphere, so it's going to be 4 times pi times the radius square, which means this one's going to be 150 watts over 4 times pi times the distance from the Earth's surface to the satellite, which is the radius. It's approximately 1,609,000. 344 meters. So, and that's, see if I can fit all that in there. And that is squared. So if we plug and chug that in our calculator, it's going to give us 150 on your numerator, 3.255 times 10 to the 13 on your denominator. And then simplifying that down more is going to give you an answer of 4. 0.609 times 10 to the negative 12 watts per meter square. So that gives us a power density of 4.609 times 10 to the negative 12 watts per meter square. And that's our final answer. Now I wanted to throw this one little curveball at you just that way you can get a little practice and be aware of converting miles to meters and vice versa because not all of your equations and not all of the things in your reference material is going to be in one unit. Some of them are in miles, some of them are in meters. You just got to be able to convert from one to the other very easily, as well as get a little more familiar with the calculator and what it can do. Well, hopefully these weren't too difficult. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know, and I hope you all have a good day.